Hi, everybody. This is Emma Lavez Larocque, Puppy Story Chen, here with episode six, I think it is, <laughs> of In My Pet Based Kitchen. And today, um, it is, we're getting towards the end of August and the beginning of September. And I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Um, in that, I wanted to talk about something that I picked up at our local farm this week because I'm, I, I love fall. It is my favorite time of year. I love harvest season when all, I mean, it's been amazing already all summer getting local produce from lo, from our local farm and our local stores and also friends and family. My sister brought over this incredible um, bounty of food. If you don't follow my Instagram page, um, you could go check it out, Plant Based Star HN. It, uh, I, I posted a picture of her with her two kids uh, and all the food they brought over uh, yesterday was incredible. But anyway, today I want to talk about squash because it's seasonal. I have a couple of recipes that I'm going to share with you. And I love these recipes are kind of interesting, kind of different. They use a kind of squash that a lot of people are not necessarily familiar with, but it's very common in our area. So, the, you, you know, usually you see butternut squash recipes, acorn squash recipes, but this uses a kabocha squash or kabocha squash. I'm still not quite clear on the correct pronunciation if there is one. Um, and that is what I picked up. And I love this squash. The flesh is a little bit drier than usual um, or other types of squash, but it's super sweet. It makes a really nice hummus. So I have a great recipe I'm going to share with um, you today and make that um, and just talk about some of the components of that. And um, I'm also going to share a kaboka squash soup recipe with you, which both of them are amazing. So if you're doing this, um, and I wanted to share both of them, let me go back for a second, because um, they are, um, because if you cook up a squash, you can make both of them, do a little bit of batch cooking, and then have a couple of different recipes on hand because you won't need all the squash for the hummus. So, um, but what I wanted to, I, I kind of wanted to share with you today is, oh, you can see a couple of the other kinds of squashes. Uh, this is for my sister Lisa, patty pan squash that I'll probably just saute up. I love these, these guys um, chopped up and sauteed. And this was from my friend Denise. Um, I'm not totally sure what kind of, and she wasn't sure what kind of squash it was. I think it's um, some kind of um, maybe crookneck cross of some kind. So anyway, I'll explore with that and um, see how that goes. But um, this recipe that I'm going to share with you today, if you have an acorn squash or another type of squash, you could use that as well. I just really particularly love the flavor of the kaboka squash in this. But what I'm going to show you today is... Um, if you haven't done this before, it's kind of a game changer when it comes to squash, because I know when I teach my classes and we, I, I love squash, so I use it in a lot of recipes. And one of the big things people always said to me is, how do I like cut open squash or um, get into squash without, you know, really a lot of effort in cutting or an ax or, <laughs> or, um, you know, cutting all the flesh away. And so I used to always roast them in the oven and then scoop out the, well, actually it's not totally true with, with butternut squash, I would cut it up but and roast it. But um, with acorn squash, I'd always cut it in half and roast it in the oven, which is also a great way to do it. But the Instant Pot, if you have an Instant Pot, this is such an easy thing to do. Just a few steps, you can walk away from it for a few minutes and you're gonna have a beautifully cooked squash at the end. You don't have to cut it. You don't have to do anything to it other than just remove the stem. So I I cheated and pre-removed this because they are a little tough to get off sometimes if I didn't want to be struggling on the video. So I anyway, remove the stem. Got my Instant Pot here, you can see. So I've got my, my uh, inner pot and I've got the trivet out. So you want the trivet that comes with the Instant Pot. They come with all the Instant Pots, I believe. Put that in, and that's gonna hold the, the um, squash up from the bottom of the pot. You want two cups of water, so just put that in. And then put the whole squash, you don't need to shove holes in it. You don't need to do anything other than just take the, take the 
um, top off. And honestly, I think I cooked it once with the top and it was fine too. So that's probably optional anyway. Put it inside. Don't forget the water because that's what's going to steam it for you. But put the water in, trivet, squash in the Instant Pot. And then you're going to put your lid on. If you want a, uh, an, uh, if anybody, I know the Instant Pot scares a lot of people. And um, I think um, I've done a lot of Instant Pot dem dem demos. Um, over the years and I think people are starting to get more comfortable with them but if there's anybody out there who doesn't you know who's still nervous about using them and would like to see a demo on that just make sure you um, send me an inquiry and I can certainly do that so I've locked my um lid in I have put it to um sealing so you don't want to have it open so you're going to put it in, into sealing and we're going to set it manually for 10 minutes on high pressure. We're gonna let that come up to temperature and cook for 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna let the temperature come down and we are going to come back and um, you will see, I will show you this, um, how it's cooked and what to do with it next. And we will make hummus. So I will be back as soon as this is done. See you in a bit. Okay, so the Instant Pot has cooked away. It came down, I let, allowed the pressure to come down naturally. Um, you may end up with a bit, um, it, it might not be quite cooked if you don't do that. So do allow that extra time for the pressure to come down naturally. And I also wanted to mention, I forgot to mention when I, in the first part of this, that if you are, um, uh, you, the, the time in the Instant Pot is gonna depend on the size of your squash as well. So I've got about a two pound squash and um, two minutes plus, or sorry, 10 minutes plus the um, time to depressurize naturally um, usually does that. Um, that's a good good amount of time for that. But if you have a, um, a, um, a heavier squash, a bigger squash, then you're going to want to add about a minute for every extra pound. And if for whatever reason, it's not what you're looking for is for a knife to slide into the squash easily and if it's not cooked by the time you um by the time it comes out just put it in just with wrap the pressure back up and put it back in for another few minutes um or however long you think it needs when it's ready to come out it's very hot of course so take the trivet out carefully with your oven mitts and you can see I've stuck my knife in it a couple of times and you can see it goes in quite quite easily. So that's what you're looking for. And at this point, it's looking a little beat up. You can see actually some of it's already starting to come apart. It's quite soft on the bottom. And um, at this point, you can cut it in half very easily, much more easily than if you were looking, um, if you were trying to um, cut it when it was raw. And then I'm gonna just use my, my oven mitts because it's still quite hot and just get some of those seeds out. I only need half a cup of this squash. You can see it's quite flaky and dry. Uh, it works beautifully in the, um, the hummus recipe though. And you can definitely eat the skin if you have an organic, um, if you have an organic squash, I'd encourage you to. There's um, a, a lot of different fiber um, in, dif in the skin, often a lot of nutrition in the skin of different uh, vegetables. So if um, it's something that you think you could eat, then I'd encourage you to do so. So I'm just gonna move some of these seeds out of the way. It's quite a lot of hot filling. <laughs> I don't want the seeds necessarily. You can, of course, clean and roast the seeds as well. And I'm just going to move this to the side. I'll guess we'll use that for something else. And I need about half a cup for my hummus. So I'm just going to cut some of that out. And I'm actually going to include the skin, but you can the skin comes away really nice and easily, as you can see here. It's very thin on this on this particular squash, so I think you can 
it's not going to change the texture or the flavor of this. And like I said, lots of times, carrots are another one. Um, the, the skin has a lot of um, nutrition in it, so lots of different types of fiber. So great thing to include if you're making a dish with um, that you can include the skin with in for various vegetables. Okay, so let's make the hummus. Actually, before we do, I just want to um, talk a little bit about squash is a delicious thing to add to your diet, but it also it uh, contains so many different nutrients. It's a really good source of beta carotene, which turns into vitamin A. So it's great for your skin, your eyes. Um, it's also a really rich source of antioxidants, vitamin C, and uh, for the same, good for your heart, your skin, um, your eyes for the same reasons. And then um, it has lots of minerals in it. It's got potassium and um, uh, it's got lots of iron. It's got some calcium. So it's good for your bones, your heart, it's great for um, all kinds of different aspects of your health. And of course, has a, a ton of fiber, um, so, soluble fiber, which is the kind of your gut bacteria like. So it's great for your gut as well. So it's a really good thing to incorporate into your diet in the form of soups, or you can mash it up. I don't find kabocha squash the best one to mash up, but you can do it. And it's, it's still tasty. Like I said, it has quite a sweet, um, rich, um, buttery taste. So if you haven't tried it, I really encourage you to do that, but it also makes a beautiful soup, beautiful hummus, which I'm going to share those recipes with you on my blog, and I'll link to those in the notes below this video. Okay, let's make the hummus. So this is kind of an interesting hummus. I've got a bit of a mess here <laughs> with my squash. I'm just going to clear myself some space, not using the edge of my knife, and I'm just going to get the skin off of my clove of garlic. And I've got my food processor over here. When I make hummus, I like to put the hummus, the garlic in first because you can, then you don't have to, you don't have to um, mince it up. You can just use the food processor to do that for you. So I'm going to just pulse that. A moment. And it's all mixed up for me. And now I can put in the rest of my ingredients. So I've got a can of chickpeas or one and a half cups if you're using um, ones that you've cooked from scratch. I'm going to include the aquafaba for some liquid, um, which is the beet, the water in the can. Um, these ones don't have any salt. So it's just plain aquafaba and it's not uh, harmful. It's not really, I don't think it really has any particular health benefits, but it acts as a nice thickening liquid for hummus. So I'm going to use that. I'm adding my half cup of kabocha squash. This is a really nice recipe um, when you're back, if you're batch cooking, if you've got all the squash available to make a double batch of if you want to. Um, we are going to use about a tablespoon of lime juice. I'm just going to cut my lime in half and juice that right into my so this is kind of a chili lime, uh, or, or a, actually I'm using chipotle today, sort of a spicy lime hummus and the kabocha flavor just uh, really, really sets it apart. Drea Burton is one of my favorite plant-based chefs, as a lot of you who um, have, have been with me for a while know. And um, I love her sort of attitude about hummus, which is that hummus is a food group. You can make it with so many different ways, so many different varieties and so many different flavors. And it just is a, a wonderful spread to use on bread or crackers or with vegetables as a snack, a healthy snack at any time of the day. Um, I've got about a quarter cup of sun-dried tomatoes rehydrated. I normally use tahini in this dressing or in this recipe, but I don't have any today. So I thought, I didn't realize I didn't have any before I started doing this video or I started getting ready for it. So I thought, well, I'm gonna use a little bit of cashew butter. It won't be quite as, um, cause tahini has a nice little bitterness to it, but I think it will, the cashew butter will. It just adds a little bit of fat and the cashew butter is quite benign, like doesn't have a lot of flavor. So uh, I think it will work well in this and not give too much of a, you know, peanut buttery flavor or something like that. But lots of times you can 
switch up these ingredients if you don't have you know if you don't have lime you could use lemon you could use a little bit of apple cider vinegar and lots of times when you do that you find varieties that you like yourself better i'm going to use about um a teaspoon of chipotle this gives a nice spicy kick but also a really nice smoky background i find and you'll notice with the soup recipe that i'm going to share as well it has um, um, uh, smoked paprika in it. I really love the smoky. I find that goes well with the kabocha squash for, for some reason. And then you're gonna put some salt and in to taste. So I'm gonna probably start here with about maybe half a teaspoon. And I may not need my full third of a cup of water because I, included the aquafaba so I'm just going to put a couple of tablespoons in there and I think I've got everything just to double check my recipe yes I do okay so after a couple of minutes of blending we've got a nice smooth creamy hummus look at the color it's beautiful it's one of the things I love about the squash as well and um we are going to I'll plate it up and and uh with, but let me taste it first want to taste for the spices and the Mmm, it's so delicious. I love this. And I usually only have access to kabocha squash at this time of year. So I will be buying more of it and making more of this hummus. It also freezes really well. So you can make it, batch it, freeze it, and pull it out later on um, for a nice reminder of fall. Um, so... That is uh, in my plant-based kitchen for today. Um, I think I've mentioned everything I wanted to. If not, I will put notes below. Sometimes I get carried away and then I forget what I'm talking about, but I'll share the recipes on my blog and I'll link to that below this video. If you have a question that you would like or a topic that you'd like me to discuss in another episode, please let me know. I'm looking for ideas and um, I, yeah, thanks for joining me and I will hopefully see you next week. Have a great week.